Over the last few years since I started this YouTube channel, I've tried out quite a number of anti-aging devices. Whether it's light therapy, laser, radio frequency, ultrasound, it's my curiosity that drives me to try out all these different products to see what their effect is on my skin. But there's always a little bell ringing at the back of my mind as I ask myself, is this okay to use regularly? Is it completely safe? Well, last week I spoke to Dr. Tian Xu about the benefits, evidence and safety of red light therapy and you can watch that interview along with others in my Honest Expert series right here. As a doctor with a keen interest in all things anti-aging, it became very clear very quickly that Dr. Tian really knows her stuff. She looks at the research and she understands the technologies. So in this video, she helps to answer some of the questions I know so many of us are looking for answers to when it comes to the safety of at-home anti-aging treatments. You've kindly uh, agreed to talk to me about at home devices more widely um, because they are, there are just such an array of them. You know, we've, we've got red light that we talked about, but there's radio frequency, laser, there's now even ultrasound handheld devices that you can use at home and they are becoming particularly popular. Um, but what I'm picking up from viewers and, you know, I share it myself is how safe are these things? to use and you know consumers are kind of left with some rough guidance of how to use them but you know we're left sort of figuring it out for for ourselves i mean do you think for instance when with the radio frequency and ultrasound devices do you think there are have you got concern concerns around safety with any of those devices so the the at home devices they should be a much lower energy level than the in-clinic machines that we use. You know, the radio frequency treatments that I deliver with the big machine in clinic, mm. it def definitely is going to give you the stimulation. It's going to give you down downtime um, and some possibly some side effects, you know, from, from having the treatments. At home devices, won't you shouldn't get that sort of irritation. Um, but then again, it, you always have to balance the stimulation to the skin with the result that you're going to get. If you don't do anything to the skin, nothing's going to change. Yeah. If you give it a nice massage, it might improve the blood flow a little bit, but you might not get any sort of deeper um, or more significant change. If you start to put needles into the skin, you know, with microneedling, for example, causing lots of controlled injury, then you're going to get the downtime, but as the skin heals, you're going to get that improvement. You're going to get more collagen, more elastin, more hyaluronic acids produced as a result of that. Um, similar thing with lasers and radio frequency, you know, the in-clinic treatments, they're quite quite stimulating quite strong um and you you feel it you know it's a, the, some of them can be quite painful but then you will get the result because your skin has been stimulated so the at home treatments if they're very gentle very mild and you can barely notice it then i'm really questioning what sort of result you're going to get so mm -hmm. it might be very safe but are you going to get the result that they've advertised for maybe not um, or you might have to use it so much all the time yeah, yeah. to eventually get some sort of improvement. So, you know, it's always a balance between how much time you're willing to invest in it and for what result. Yeah. Um, so it's not purely a safety issue, but it is, are you using your time and money on the, on the thing that's going to give you the result that you want? That That's the main issue. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, Based on what you said, you know, a lot of people um, are worried about fat loss with these things. Um, if it's a handheld device at home, um, which is going to be less powerful, do you think that's less of an issue? I mean, honestly, I, I don't think anyone really knows because these devices mm. have not been around long enough. And sometimes with fat loss, 
it's it can be difficult to put it down to one thing because if it happens over a space of a few years well it, yeah. there may be other factors involved like has that person actually lost weight overall um mm. and if they've aged a few years well the bone structure changes and the fat pads change and you naturally lose a bit of fat from certain certain parts of the face as part of the aging process as well so if it happens over a long period of time it probably isn't the machine that's doing it if it happens in a short space of time then it could be due to the machine but if it was that potent then you know they wouldn't be able to use such such strong energies in at home device yeah i know yeah. definitely for things like um for treatments like kaifu which is sort of an ultrasound a type of ultrasound treatment um and even with certain radio frequency treatments if it goes to a certain level the in clinic treatments i know that there is that risk of fat loss, you know, if it reaches a certain temperature in the skin for a certain amount of time, you can achieve fat loss. Um, but you're never going to reach that sort of level with the at home device in the machine. Yeah. So if people are concerned about fat loss um, from these at home devices, I think it's risk is minimal. I don't think you're going to get that. Okay. Um, so in terms of safety, theoretically, it should be quite safe. Yeah. But then, but then again, with these at home devices, there's not a whole lot of research behind it. Yeah. So exactly how safe and how standardized they are. We just don't know if someone if you buy something from from Amazon, um, you don't know whether there's been the, the testing, you know, the, the safety testing that went behind the machine. And it maybe it's maybe the energy level is higher than it says it is, in which case it would make it not so safe. So yeah. it's just a lack of standardization that makes it unsafe. Yeah, yeah, and it is, it's very confusing uh, to the consumers. But where ultrasound and radio frequency and even red light are concerned, it sounds like, you know, to somebody like me with, with not even a fraction of, of your knowledge, I sometimes worry about these things close to my head thinking, is this gonna penetrate my brain? I mean, that kind of thing, can we rule that kind of thing out with those treatments? Um, as far as I'm aware, <laughs> there is no <laughs> to brain injury from, from these treatments. Um, you know, these things are, they're not radioactive. Um, it's not yes, the same yes. as having x-rays or, you know, um, all those like radio waves. We have mobile, we use mobile phones all the time and, and those kind of longer wavelengths are penetrating our bodies all the time. And even though some people say that, and some people are worried about the radio waves around us. Um, mm. There's, to be honest, we probably have more things to to worry about than yes, than yeah. these sort of kind of the the wavelengths that don't you know don't penetrate so deeply. But I I think in general with these things, if you I don't want to use anything that's not going to be effective for me. It seems yeah, like a yeah. waste of time and money. So I really urge people to think carefully if they're not being guided, but, you know, if they genuinely care about how how this how to look after the skin, you know, how healthy the skin is and they haven't got guidance from anyone. They're just doing random things. I, I really suggest that they have a consultation first with a specialist to get a good idea, a better idea about their own skin condition and what it is their own skin needs. Because a lot of the time people will read in a magazine, read a, a blog and someone has used these products and it's been really effective for them. Well, just because it's good for someone else, it doesn't necessarily mean it's good for you. Um, it's not one size fits all because everyone's skin is slightly different. Everyone has got different medical background, um, different histories. So it's really important to understand your own skin and do what's right for you. So I hope you found Dr. Tian's advice helpful. As she said, the reality is no one can say for sure what the long-term cumulative effects of using at-home lasers, light therapy, radio frequency and the like. But it's reassuring to know that these technologies have been in use for decades now without major safety issues. And when it comes to fat loss, she felt it was unlikely that at-home devices could cause anything significant. But using them too frequently for too long, we start getting into unknown territory. And so my own policy is just to use these things sparingly. 
just for a few minutes at a time, not long lingering on any one area too long to avoid overheating your skin. I've moved to using my own Lumo radio frequency device monthly to maintain my results. I had been using it weekly and then fortnightly, I've moved to month monthly and I'll film an update on that in the coming months. So next time on the Honest Channel, I'm gonna be comparing three products that promise to deliver instant skin lifting results. Until then, let me know your thoughts on Dr. Tian's advice and if you found today's video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.